at the height of my public health career, I was given the title the Condom King. Not just locally, not just statewide, not nationally, but internationally. All because I was trying to fight a pandemic. I'm a medical oncologist, a cancer specialist. I'm used to extreme situations. When I walk into a patient's room and ask to speak to them and then tell them I'm an oncologist, the response is intense. When I was given the opportunity to become the first African American and the youngest director of the Ohio Department of Health, I was thrown into an entirely different environment. Public health is generally passive and quiet. Let's face it, public health presupposes a non-event. As long as people aren't running through the streets screaming, public health is pretty much doing its job. As the new director, I needed to change that image. I wanted people to understand that public health was an essential component for maintaining a secure society. I needed something to happen. Well, as they say, be careful what you wish for. When I assumed that office, I had to meet the challenge of the first modern day pandemic, HIV AIDS. My first concern was to make sure public health was going to the people at need. So I branded myself as Ohio's family doctor and I make house calls. I also committed to visiting every health department in the state of Ohio. I needed their help to support my efforts to battle this pandemic. In every pandemic, there is a sensitive population at high risk for the HIV AIDS pandemic, that population included gay men and IV drug users. These groups had been greatly stigmatized. There was a pervasive attitude that should they catch the virus and die, well, it's just God's punishment for their lifestyle. I had to decriminalize being members of that group by publicly showing them caring respect and letting Ohioans know all life is sacred and must be protected. The Department of Health needed to find out more about this high-risk behavior. We learned that a lot of this behavior occurred at gay bars. We also learned that the bartenders at those establishments had considerable influence over their patrons. Therefore, we recruited those bartenders to become health care teachers, to educate about prevention. At some point in time, in all pandemics, complacency sets in. It was happening in Ohio. I had to do something bold to change that. Now, I define boldness as the ability to endure endless criticism and then using that criticism to your advantage. I developed a linear concept. Bold action would lead to criticism, criticism to controversy, and controversy to stimulate active debate and discussion. It was around that time that the department had been approached by a group that wanted to teach prevention through condom use. They wanted to sponsor programs on college campuses to show students how to use condoms properly. That information somehow got into the hands of the most vocal conservatives in the state. They felt that these programs would go beyond colleges, but would be presented to all students, even the very young. They felt that this was a threat to the morality of Ohio's youth. They were heard to comment, we have to stop this condom nonsense. Who does this new director think he is, the condom king? My opposition tried to sabotage my every effort. They even attacked me personally. As a black man in his 30s who supports the rights of gay men and IV drug users and has been given the disparaging title, you heard it before, the condom king, you can imagine how they attacked my character. It was painful. Regardless, if I was bold enough to believe I could cure cancer, I had to be bold enough to believe I could save lives during a pandemic. 
I would often be asked to present at high schools. They were just waiting for me to say something morally contentious. However, they were unaware of my history of performing as a stand-up comic. With that skill, I taught prevention through humor. They never heard me make a mistake. When confronted directly, they would always ask, how can you endorse morality and promote condom use? Isn't that giving a mixed message? My response, I'm teaching young people about a deadly disease and through no mixed messaging, rather through scientific fact. We have a choice. And if I have to choose between teaching young people how to prevent a deadly disease versus watching them die of that disease, die of AIDS, I choose life. How do you choose? The uproar of this controversy was the most talked about topic in the state of Ohio. On the front page of every newspaper was the headline about the great condom controversy debate. The controversy became international and I was interviewed by the BBC. This action dispelled the complacency and it forced Ohioans to reevaluate the true, clear, and present danger of the HIV pandemic. I also worked with our legislators, and through that interaction, Ohio became the first state to pass legislation that protected the rights of HIV AIDS patients. As a result of all of these activities, Ohio only had a fraction of the number of deaths than had been predicted for a state with such a large population. Today, there's a new pandemic, COVID-19. Stigmatized populations and complacency remain our greatest adversaries. At this time, that stigmatized population includes the elderly and nursing home residents. There's a pervasive attitude that should the elderly die, it's an acceptable loss. Let's face it, they're waiting for God to call them at any moment anyway. National leaders have made comments such as 60 and 70 year olds have pretty much come to the end of their ability to contribute to society. So if they die, it's not such a big loss. Or the elderly must be willing to do everything to support the economic recovery of our nation. The elderly want to live. I'm in that group. I feel I still have so much that I can contribute. And besides, I have a new pandemic to battle. We don't need to wait for a vaccine to help us defeat this disease. We can immunize the elderly against being alone and feeling ignored. Sometimes the problem seems so great and there's so little we can do. However, I assure you, little acts can lead to great outcomes. They say it takes a village to raise a child. Well, I say it takes a caring community to protect the elderly. We can call an elderly family member or, or neighbor, find out how they're doing, see what they need, call them. Sometimes just hearing a caring voice can mean so much. And we must empower the elderly by giving them a voice. We must absolutely assert that increasing age does not mean decreasing value. Complacency again reigns as once before. People, especially young people, feel that restarting our nation is an all clear sign. It is not. We have to remind our young people they are neither immune nor immortal. We have to be bold enough to remain aware and to advocate for everyone to do everything that is necessary to prevent the spread of this viral contagion. Remember, by definition, pandemic means everyone in the world is at risk. I want to warn you, consider this address rehearsal. There's a virus waiting to emerge that can be far more disastrous 
than our current plight. Oh well, the time of the condom king has passed. I guess for a new pandemic, I need a new title. Call me the Sultan of Sanitizers. <laughs>